What's up, guys? Welcome back to the ZMAM Show. Mike here as we're taking a look at The Walking Dead Season 10, Episode 20, called Splinter. And this is going to be a pretty short synopsis because this show pretty much just centered around Princess tonight, which, again, we don't know much about her character, so it was kind of good to get an idea of what was happening. But I will admit, this episode was kind of a slow burner. You know, it was I really did feel a lot of the episode kind of like, where is this going? You know, like, a lot of conversations, this and that. I'm like, you know, it's like, is this really necessary? Well, it actually really was, and I thought it was pretty gratifying towards the end when we find out that it was kind of all what was going on up here in Princess's mind and blurring the lines between what was real and her little subconscious reality. So we get a chance to see uh, a quick synopsis of some quick action in the beginning where basically uh, Yumiko and Eugene and uh, Ezekiel, they're all being taken their different ways, right? They're getting captured by the Commonwealth stormtrooper looking guys. And we have a chance to see Princess grab for a weapon on one of the holsters of the Commonwealth guys. And, you know, things get a little crazy. They get, you know, her to the ground. And then Yumiko tries to make a move, tell him not to hurt her. Yumiko gets knocked a solid one with a weapon. And as we get into it, we basically see they're all put in train cars, at least what it appears to be. And we get to see Princess. And she keeps having these uh, times of anxiety and she's we watch her she's trying to calm herself down she's telling that uh, she's naming off cities uh, in alphabetical order and just doing these other little things to try and keep herself calm and together so I was trying to wonder is this claustrophobia or is this something else because it seemed more than just claustrophobia and I think we found out in the end it was she uh, has a chance to cure Yumiko in a car which appears to be right next to her and it sounds like she's kind of fading in and out probably has a concussion from getting nailed in the head with that weapon and so, you know, we see Princess Hellbent on trying to get out of this car. She wants to help her new friends. Uh, she wants to be a part of their lives. But Yumiko's telling her, don't do it. I mean, there's even a part where she manages to get out of the train car through this little porthole that was poorly patched. And I was just kind of wondering, like, what are the chances of that? And how are these guys not keeping an eye on this? But she's able to get out. And she talks to Eugene. And Eugene says, don't screw this up. You know, so everybody's telling her, don't mess this up. Don't mess this up. And uh, we even get a chance to see her in front of the, one of the head honchos. And he's asking all these questions. And she's being a total jerk about it. Which, mind you, it kind of makes sense. But it's not doing him any favors whatsoever. So much so that she even gets knocked around in there, too. I was solid one right upside her jaw. We find a little bit about her past history. About how it sounds like um, she had... Um, you know her biological mother but i guess she was dating other guys or whatever and one guy in particular sounds like he would hit her and hit her hard up across the face or the jaw or whatever and that's no good obviously been extremely lonely uh trying to deal with that the apocalypse has got to be hard we've seen that in other movies too i am legend now uh, we've seen it in castaway talking to uh you know inanimate objects like a volleyball or um even talking to mannequins like uh will smith did in i am legend so clearly she's not all fully there, but we just didn't realize how far she really wasn't there. When we finally get a chance, we see Ezekiel finally pops in from a top hatch in the train car. I'm like, what are the chances of all this going down so well? And he gets in and he's talking to her. They're trying to build on the relationship a little bit, trying to figure out what they're going to do next. Ezekiel says he's kind of freaking out and it's his fear. That's why he's getting heightened and saying things he doesn't mean. But it, it felt a little odd because I was like, this doesn't really feel like Ezekiel. But I'm like, okay, I mean, maybe his character is changing a little bit or he's growing or something. That's not what it was. And so we get a chance to see one of the uh, Commonwealth guys, uh, guards come in to feed um, the princess. And all of a sudden, as she's kind of talking to him for just a hot second, Ezekiel comes out of nowhere, which I'm like, in the train car? How did this work out? What is he, a ninja? And he just socks the dude and the dude gets plowed out and knocked out. And the next thing you know, you know, there's some interrogation going on. You know, Princess is kind of freaking out a little bit too. And Ezekiel just totally loses his shit and just starts beating the ever-loving crap out of this guy. And I was just like, wow. I'm like, Ezekiel, I mean, I know this, this is definitely an intense situation and I might do the same thing too, but this does not seem like you. Well, it wasn't him. And I was loving how they started blurring the lines of reality and suddenly we realized it, he was never in the train car. There was never a hatch in the top. He didn't get in there. It was always Princess. She did it. She knocked him out. She was beating the crap out of him. Um, you know, she did all of this stuff. The hatch in the back where she went to go visit uh, Eugene for a hot minute. Not there. Uh, the area where she was clawing at the, uh, the wall trying to get to uh, talk to Yumiko. Not there. 
nothing. Uh, the splinter, I guess, was there the entire time, which I was wondering myself too. I was like, was it an infection? Was the splinter causing an infection in your brain? But I'm like, no, there's not enough, I don't think, in a splinter that's going to cause your brain to go that funky. But who knows? Uh, I'm not a doctor. But I'm pretty sure it's just, she's just kind of going loco, you know? And she even made a comment at one point to the guy, you know, it's only the, uh, you know, the ADD, the PTSD, the loneliness of being in the apocalypse, being beaten when I was younger, all those things. Besides that, I'm an extremely sane person. I'm like, yeah, I get it. You have some, some definitely points against you, uh, you know, in your world pr prior to the apocalypse and even after. But uh, so as we get a chance to see the guy, he's uh, the guard, he's talking about how he's on probation and he might be in trouble too. But the only problem with this is we're not sure how much of what he said to her was actually in true reality or was it just kind of her and her brain making stuff up along the way? I mean, it might have been him answering most of the time, all legit, and it was just her thinking it was Ezekiel talking and hitting him and it was really her. But it, it, we're not really sure. And so much so that by the end, when he finally uh, he asked for the weapon back and she says, well, what if I answer your questions? Will that give me some good graces and or get us get us back in your good graces so we can join you guys or maybe you know see what's going on? And he says it might. I can't make that call. I'm not a I'm not a higher up. And so she answers and he says that'll do uh, for now. You know, so give me my weapon. And he, they get the weapon. She says, when can I see my friends? They open the car door and all three of them are standing. I'm pretty sure this is this is happening. This is not in her brain. We see the three standing outside all. Uh, hooded in black cloth or whatever and um, and then he also hoods her as well and it, it fades to black and there's a bunch of guards around so we have to wonder did she totally hose over their chances of getting to know who the commonwealth was and you know are they going to be left to rot to go back to alexandria which mind you they'll survive like they always have more than likely but i mean the commonwealth they might be able to help them out i don't know enough about them i didn't read the comics but i'm very curious to find out make sure to leave some comments if you know much about this or if you have any ideas where you think this could be going try not to spoil too much but all the same, it is Walking Dead. We'll just see where it's going because they're making this up as it goes along, I think. Uh, this is Mike with the Z-Man Show. Make sure to come out on Wednesdays. Check out my buddy Admin and I as we do other movie reviews. Uh, again, make some comments. Let me know what you know about this episode. Like and subscribe if you did enjoy the content. And furthermore, we will see you guys at the next review, which I believe is going to be Zack Snyder's um, edition of the Justice League, which I've already started watching it. It's looking promising, guys. So... I know the first one was pretty damn rough. Even with a 6.2 or 3 out there on IMDb, I'm not even sure I agree with that. I would have given it like a 5, 5.5 five, five maybe. It was literally one of the worst superhero movies I watched. But so far, it's looking good. So you may want to check that out. Four-hour movie, so get ready for it. So uh, check us out back on Wednesday when we do the review. And I'll talk to you guys then. See ya.